Hi, we're going to switch gears a little bit here and look at data relationships. Before we can get started though, we need to do just a little bit of data prep to summarize the COVID-19 data. Basically, we're going to be collapsing the time dimension in the data to get the final COVID-19 death rate per 100,000 people for each county. Once the data is summarized, we we'll use the Enrich tool to get other county level data. And then we can create scatter plots, use swipe to compare two maps, create a bivariate map, and finally we'll use spatial statistics to identify statistically significant local relationships in our data. We want to get the final value for deaths per 100,000 people associated with each county. Since this is also that field's largest value, we can use the summary statistics tool to request the maximum value associated with each county FIPS. After the the death rate values are written to an output table, we'll use the join field tool to transfer the field to our counties layer. Finally, we'll use the alter field tool to change the field name from max underscore deaths underscore per 100k to COVID-19 death rate. And success, this is our feature class that we've created. Now let's make a map. This map was created using Jenks Natural Breaks Rendering and we'll use it to, to explore the COVID-19 death rates. Notice that the, the rates aren't all the same. They vary quite a bit in fact. They range from zero to as high as 835 deaths per 100,000 people. If the death rates were all about the same, if they were purely a function of population, so more people, more deaths, we would have to conclude that dying from COVID-19 is a random process. It's, it's nothing more than just bad luck. But we don't see that, and we know absolutely that different policies and demographics have had an impact on COVID-19 severity. Let's explore some of these data relationships. We know, for example, that death rates have been higher in communities of color. And in our map, we can see dark red areas across the Arizona-New Mexico border and also in some of the South Dakota counties, just a few of the places where there are American Indian tribal lands. We also see darker red areas in the South, places with higher percentages of Black and African American people. And in Texas and the Southwest, there are larger Hispanic populations. The Hispanic community, in fact, has had the highest rate of death from COVID-19 for people younger than age 50. So for demonstration purposes, let's start by looking at the percentage of people who identify with the Hispanic ethnicity in relation to COVID-19 death rates. And we'll look at a couple other variables as well. To get the additional county level data, we'll use the Enrich tool. We set the input features parameter to our county feature class. We provide a name and a path for the output. Then we select the variables we're interested in using the data browser. We'll start by getting the percent Hispanic population. We'll also get data for the percentage of seniors in each county. We know that seniors had the highest COVID-19 death rates overall. And finally, we'll get both the homeowners and renters who don't have access to a vehicle. The renter and owner data are separate fields in the browser, but we can easily fix this by using the Calculate Field tool to sum the homeowners and renters, then divide by total households. This gives us the percentage of all households without access to a vehicle. The idea behind this variable is that households without access to a vehicle will probably need to rely on public transportation, and this might increase their exposure to COVID-19. We certainly could explore other variables, but this will get us started. We're going to be measuring relationships, so before going any further, let's talk a little bit about what it means when we say two variables are related. In the simplest sense, we would say that two variables are related if we can estimate the values of one variable based on what we know about the values of another variable. So for example, we can probably get a pretty good understanding of diabetes risk by examining data about obesity the two variables are related. Conversely, if no information can be gained about one variable from another, we say they're unrelated or independent. And we know that data relationships can take many different forms, including linear, curvilinear, and sinusoidal, just to give a couple examples. We can look for these relationships by creating scatter plot charts. So let's do that next. We call the output from the Enrich Tool County data. Well, we can right click on it in the contents pane, select to create a chart, and then choose to create a scatter plot. 
we set the x-axis to COVID death rate and the y-axis to percent Hispanic population, and we get a scatter plot. But, hmm, it doesn't really show much of a relationship, does it? The r-squared value, in fact, is only 0 0.01. Not exactly what we were expecting, um, but let's look at the other variables. Weird. So the relationship for households without access to vehicles and even the percent senior population also have a very weak relationship to the COVID-19 death rates. Well, let's not give up. If we think about it, everything happens somewhere, someplace. And when we analyze our data outside of its spatial context, it might just be that we're only getting one part of that story. Let's map the variables and look at the data within their spatial context. We can start by comparing two maps side by side. The map on the left is COVID-19 death rates, and the map on the right is percentage Hispanic population. And we do actually see some correspondence in the Southwest and Texas, but outside of those areas, it's a bit difficult to pick up patterns. Using swipe with those same maps helps us to focus on either horizontal or vertical areas of the map, but again, it's difficult to draw conclusions. Positive relationships, higher death rates and higher Hispanic percentages would probably show up, but negative relationships, for example, would be a bit harder to detect. Oh, I know, let's create a bivariate map. Now we're getting somewhere. Bivariate maps classify both of the variables into high, medium, and low categories, and then map every combination. Notice the legend, and let's focus on the corners. Counties with high death rates and high percentages of Hispanic populations stand out as the darkest color on the map. The green areas are high for Hispanic population percentages but low for COVID death rates. The white areas are low for both death rates and Hispanic percentages. And finally, the purple areas are high for death rates but low for Hispanic percentages. Now you've probably noticed that all of the methods we've considered so far, scatter plots, swipe maps, and bivariate maps, use our ability to visually discern relationships. And actually, our eyes are really very good at this, but there are limits to what we can comprehend visually. Another option for understanding data relationships is to measure them using spatial statistics. A couple common statistics that determine if there's a relationship between two variables include Pearson's correlation coefficient and Spearman's rank correlation. These and other global statistical methods like them, including the scatter plot charts we created earlier, are limited, however, because they assume a couple things. They assume the relationship being measured is linear, and they assume the relationship is the same everywhere, globally. In fact, for much of our data, we're likely to see a range of different relationships from linear to curvilinear to complex to unrelated. And as it turns out, there's a tool in ArcGIS Pro called Local Bivariate Relationships that can detect all of these different types of relationships. It also looks for relationships locally across the study area rather than assuming the relationship is the same everywhere. So let's see how that works. The Local Bivariate Relationships tool uses entropy to quantify relationships. Entropy is a fundamental concept of information theory. The tool works by approximating the amount of uncertainty or entropy in the values of both variables within a particular spatial neighborhood. If the relationship is statistically significant, a second step is taken to determine which type of relationship, linear, quadratic, or complex, best fits the data. Let's look at that a little more closely. To quantify the amount of mutual information shared by two variables in a neighborhood, the tool begins by linearly normalizing each variable. And this gets both of them on the same scale. It then creates a minimum spanning tree and computes a score reflecting their joint entropy. When two variables are strongly related, as shown in the top graph, their joint entropy score will be low. Now the entropy score is related to the sum of the edge lengths. The edges are the lines connecting the points. Notice how the edges connecting the points in the top graph are short. The edges connecting the points in the bottom graph are longer, indicating a weaker relationship between the variables. Once the tool gets an entropy score for the observed variable values, it shuffles the x and y values to create different pairings, creating up to 999 sets of pairings, in fact. 
The tool then estimates the joint entropy for each of these new randomized sets of pairings. Now, if the original pairings are strongly related, their entropy score will be small, and the randomized pairings will almost always produce larger entropy scores. If the original pairings are not strongly related, the randomized pairings will produce a variety of both larger and smaller entropy scores. So once the tool has finished all of the permutations, it creates a distribution of the entropy scores. If the score for the observed pairings falls in the tail of the distribution, we know the variables are related and that the relationship between them is statistically significant. Okay, great. We now know we have a statistically significant relationship for the neighborhood, but we don't yet know what kind of relationship we're dealing with. So next, for each neighborhood with a statistically significant relationship, the tool tries to fit the variable values to both a linear model and to a quadratic model. If the linear model fits best, and if the coefficient is positive, the neighborhood is marked as a positive linear relationship. If the coefficient is negative, the neighborhood is marked as a negative linear relationship. If the quadratic model fits better on the other hand and the coefficient is positive, the relationship assigned is convex, otherwise the relationship assigned is concave. If neither the linear nor the quadratic models fit well at all, and we still know the relationship is significant, right? Well then the tool assigns an undefined complex relationship to the neighborhood. And the tool processes each feature in the study area within the context of its neighboring features, continuing until all features have been processed. Well, let's see how the tool works with our COVID-19 county death rate data and the percent Hispanic population variable. The input features parameter is our county data feature class. The dependent variable is the COVID-19 death rate and the explanatory variable is the 2020 Hispanic population percent. You'll also provide a path name for the result, the output features parameter. Next, you'll specify the number of neighbors to include in each local analysis. I usually take the default of 30. The tool doesn't have enough data to produce a valid result with less than 30 features, so 30 is definitely as small as you can go. Here, 30 counties covers a large area, so we don't really need to go larger. The number of permutations and the level of confidence parameters are related. The more permutations you have, the more complete the distribution of entropy scores will be, and the more confidence you'll, ha you'll have that the distribution is reflective of all possible pairings of X and Y. More is better, but if performance is an issue, you can select fewer permutations. Here we're selecting 999 permutations. The level of confidence determines where the cutoff threshold is for statistical significance. If you need to be very sure that a relationship is statistically significant and you only want to see the most significant relationships, you'll select 99%. If you're focusing on exploratory analysis, as we are here, you'll take the default of 90%. At this point, you're ready to run the tool, and it takes about uh, 15 seconds to complete. The result map shows where there are statistically significant relationships between the two variables you're measuring. Notice that for, most, for the most part, there aren't really very many places with significant relationships, and this makes sense given we saw very low R-squared values for our original scatter plot. We do see some significant relationships though, and we also see that they run the full range of positive, negative, convex, concave, and undefined types. So globally the relationship is weak, but there are local areas with statistically significant relationships. The tool creates a scatter plot for each feature, and the feature you click on appears highlighted in the chart. If we click on one of the pink counties in Texas, we see there's a positive relationship as the percentage of Hispanic people increases, so does the COVID-19 death rate. Clicking on one of the orange counties near Boston, we see a concave relationship. The death rate for the Hispanic percentages increases up to a point and then begins falling off. In Arizona, we can see an undefined complex relationship symbolized yellow and a convex relationship symbolized blue. Let's look at the bivariate relationship map for one of the other variables. Here's the relationship map for the COVID-19 death rate and the percentage of households without access to a vehicle. 
Notice that the primary relationship is positive, linear, as expected. If households without access to a vehicle must rely on public transportation and ride sharing, they might potentially increase their exposure to COVID-19. For the counties symbolized pink, the higher percentages of households without access to a vehicle corresponds to higher COVID-19 death rates. But there are also some concave, convex, and undefined complex relationships here as well. Let's look at some of the pop-ups. Here are the pop-ups for a variety of different relationships between the COVID-19 death rates and the county percentage of households without access to a vehicle. Notice that even the convex and concave relationships express a positive relationship as the percentage of households without access to a vehicle increases, so does the COVID-19 death rate. We've covered a lot in this section of the workshop. We obtained the total COVID-19 death rate for each county. We used the Enrich tool to get additional county level data, including percent Hispanic population, percent senior population, and the percentage of households without access to a vehicle. We examined relationships by creating scatter plots, by visually comparing maps with and without swipe, and by creating a bivariate map. Finally, we used the local bivariate relationships tool to find statistically significant local relationships across the contiguous United States. Before I wrap up, I do think it's important to emphasize that we don't want to stop with just quantifying data relationships. Understanding these relationships is a first step, certainly. But we want to dig deeper to really figure out why people in Arizona and New Mexico or in counties in the South or in North and South Dakota, why are they dying at a higher rate from COVID-19 than in other places? What is it that makes these communities more fragile, more vulnerable? Even after the COVID-19 pandemic is over, it's very likely that these communities will continue to be vulnerable to stressors like climate change, economic downturns, disease, and social unrest, unless something is done to help them become more resilient.